Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Core Keeper, Keeper of the Core. We're back with uh, some more tips for you, some 10 tips that uh, we're going to break down. Maybe you know about them, maybe you don't, but uh, these are things that have helped me, and a lot of people have asked little things like this, so we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, one of the first things to do is um, I've been doing a lot of fishing lately and trying to run around to each different biome has kind of been a pain. So now that I'm spending the majority of my time over here in Azios' wilderness, uh, I wanted to get some of the mold water uh, in a safer location to fish at. So what I've done here is uh, you can see I've got my, this is the normal water right here. And then we, on the right side, we have uh, the mold water, the infected water, whatever you want to call it. So this way I can fish for both of these uh, the different fish, the rare fish and everything and the rare valuables in a safer location. One way to do that is uh, what you'll have to do is you can see all the water that's over by the, uh, the mold dungeons, right? It's going to be that infected water that we have right here. What you'll have to do, and you can do this with the, uh, the uh, water in the clay caves as well, the acid water or whatever. What you'll have to do is just kind of dig a trench all the way to the, where you want the water in your base and then let it flow in and then you'll have to uh, break, break it off, branch it off there and then uh, you'll have it in your base. One of the things you have to do though is you can't have bridges to separate the water. So what you have to do is basically have solid ground here. Otherwise, if you just use bridges, the water from one side will go dip into the other side and then you'll have that water on the other side. And then if that's a pain because then you'll have to completely seal up all the water right there and then dig it back up, dig another trench, and then just have another place to get water in there, if that makes sense. So super useful. What I've done, you know, just doing here, so now I can go fish for the uh, rare stuff over here in the infected water and then get the normal stuff over here in the uh, regular water. So that's super useful. Just another thing that I like to do. Again, I've been doing a ton of fishing lately, so we're at 88 points now, so look out for a fishing video coming soon. All right, on to the next one is going to be the beds. Now, we all know that uh, beds are super useful for refilling your health. One of the other things you can do is um, set up little outposts in different areas that you're going to be spending time in, especially for the bosses. So if you're going to go fight the bosses for the first time and you're worried you might die, which it does happen, go ahead and set up a base, and I'll get over to a spot here that I've done this with. Go ahead and set up a bed, uh, even if you want, like I've done. Just set up a little base over here by this mold dungeon. And then set a bed right here. Go ahead and lay down in it for a little bit. And this will actually reset your spawn point right here. So if I die while I'm in this mold dungeon right here, instead of respawning all the way back at my base, this one's kind of close, but you guys get the idea. Set up a respawn point right there. That way you don't have to spend, you know, another 10 minutes getting back to where your body was and recovering your items. So that's that one. Now let's go ahead and jump into the next tip. And that's going to be... All right, the next one is going to be rare locations. Now, there's a lot of these in the game. There's the ancient guardian statue in the Azios's wilderness. There's the decaying uh, cicada in the mold dungeon. There's the uh, fossil shell that's over in the uh, forgotten ruins or in the dirt biome, similar er uh, close to that area. And then there's areas like this. So a lot of these um, have stuff that you can do with. Unfortunately, I haven't found out anything you can do with this one yet. But you'll see that there's a lot of these areas all over the maps. And uh, I'm thinking down the road, we're going to be able to do things with these uh, these structures. Maybe if we have to use some kind of technology or a certain item to get them to do something. But so just keep an eye out for stuff like this and maybe a market on the map somehow if you guys have an opportunity. But as uh, some of them you can see right here, so you can get this ammonite necklace right here from the fossil shell once you find it. You go up there and just hit the shell and then uh, you'll get this ammonite necklace. So... Just be on the lookout. You can get the Ancient Guardian Necklace from the Ancient Guardian in Azios' Wilderness. The Poisonous Sickle from the uh, the Cicada that's inside the uh, Mold Dungeon. So a lot of these have little things like that that you can find. Little uh, little Easter eggs, I guess, or secrets. So just be on the lookout for these. All right, let's jump into the next one. All right, so our next tip is what you're going to be able to do with multiple worlds, right? So in this one, I've actually been trying to farm Malugaz uh, for a while. And trying to get these Crystal Skull Shards has been a pain in this world. So what I've done is go ahead and save this game right here we're going to jump into another world and uh this other world has a lot more resources than i have in this world because i've done a lot that's my main game so i'm going to go ahead and jump into this world and then we'll show you guys what i'm talking about all right so here we are in this world and uh, you can see here this is a whole new world so what i've done is gone around and gotten some crystal skull shards from the uh, cavelings in this area because there's a lot more of them here that i haven't killed yet and uh, just take these into my other world, and that way I can go uh, spawn Malugaz um, using these resources from another world. Super useful. You can interchange a lot of the stuff. So I've gone into this world for my new character, 
and giving him scarlet armor, the backpack, the glow lantern, orb lanterns, and stuff like that. A lot of the accessories and stuff just transferred right over. Any kind of stuff that I'm not using in my main world, I've went ahead and gone into this world and uh, given to this character. All right, so the next thing I'm going to jump into is we've had this quite a bit um, asked about some of these decorations and stuff in the caveling area mainly. And a lot of the stuff, you know, the caveling tables, <coughs> excuse me, the beds and uh, the little boxes and chests like that. Somebody was saying, how do you get them? Because what they did, they were using them to uh, decorate their base and whatnot. And then they ended up breaking them. So one of the things you can do if you guys do go get some of that caveling pottery and stuff like that, and you want to use it for decoration in your base, go ahead and break, pull your shovel out and right click and you'll actually dig it up. So you can actually do this with a lot of these. You can't do it with the table. You can't do it with that one right there, but these little chairs and these boxes right here, these little wooden crates and a lot of the pottery and stuff in the Forgotten Ruins, you, actually, you can actually pick up using your shovel. So right click with the shovel, you'll be able to pick it up, put it in your inventory and then go decorate your base. All right, so let's go ahead and jump to the next one. All right, so we're back in my uh, wilderness base here. And one of the other things that somebody pointed out too was instead of just using one chest with the uh, crafting stations around it, or like I did in one of my other previous videos, you can actually use the double chest and put a lot more materials in there, obviously. And you can actually maximize this by putting six different stations all around the chest. And you can only, I mean, you can still access it from the bottom here in the corner, only from the bottom. For some reason, you can't reach it from the top. But that's just another way to get more crafting stations and put more resources into one local area just to speed up the process a little bit. And as you can see down here too, we've actually got another thing right here uh, to help you speed up the process of something. It's all about just one little step to uh, increase your efficiency in the game and everything. So what I've done here is we set up robot arms right outside of my resource chests here. So we have tin or we have copper rather, tin, iron, gold, and then scarlet right here. And I think we've got some gold uh, right here being smelted so just put a robot arm right next to the uh the smelter and obviously have it powered up and then put a chest on the other side and it'll automatically take it right from the smelter and put it right into your chest a lot of people have done this where they have robot arms taking it from a conveyor to put it into the smelter and then uh, another robot arm to take it from the smelter to the chest so it's all about functionality and how you guys want to do that but i think that's a super useful tip right here as well as the chest right here with multiple crafting stations so all right next one right here and this one's been covered a lot uh, the question has been asked a lot actually and I've seen it on reddit I've seen it in discord and everything and that's how to get the NPCs once you get their uh, NPC item how to get them into your base now the basic rule of thumb is you're gonna need at least uh, a 3 by 3 area right here or a 4 by 4 basically and uh, with a bed the specific NPC item so with this one it would be you know his uh, little idol right here the summoning idol so you need a bed the idol put it there and then a door you need a door on there for him to come in so i'd recommend probably just leaving the door open and then here's the kicker so you have to be at least at least 30 tiles away for approximately one minute before he'll come in there so if i were to do this go take his idol put it in there and then go away at least 30 tiles for about a minute he should be over into that room now if i do another base and do this then that's how to do it so that's the final answer right there you need at least a bed a door at least three by three and an area to put his summoning idol and then you guys should be good to go all right, so two more here that we're going to cover, and these are just simple things that you guys probably already know, but I don't see a lot of focus put on them. So I've had a lot of questions about people uh, in Azios' Wilderness saying what they should uh, use. So your main enemies in the Azios' Wilderness are going to be the Poison Slimes and then the, uh, the Infected Cavelings. Those are the more dangerous ones. So one of the things you're dealing with when you start first getting into Azios' Wilderness is getting poisoned and then being affected by the mold. Now I've covered the mold necklace and the mold ring in another video saying that you guys should definitely try to get those. You can get the Remedazy necklace to prevent poison, but if you want to use something else in that uh, uh, necklace slot, go ahead and get the distillery once you unlock this and make yourself some of these poison aid potions. So basically once you get poisoned by either the infected cavelings or the poison slime on the ground or something like that, go ahead and make some of these. It's only 10 poison slime, so if you have your poison slime farm, you should have enough to make these and make some of these so once you get poisoned you can go ahead and drop this and it'll remove the poison right away super useful and i don't see a lot of people uh, mentioning those so just uh, be on the lookout for that if like i said if you want to use that uh, accessory slot for your rings or your necklaces for something uh better like melee damage or critical hit chance or something like that bring a bunch of these around they're pretty cheap to make a 10 poison slime and then you can uh, deal with the poison that way and as you can see right over here we do have our large bombs which can also be made from the distillery here so five bomb pepper and three poison slime now these, especially in Ezios' Wilderness, because if you haven't seen already my map of the area, 
Azios's wilderness is pretty huge. Now I've I've hit the barrier a couple different areas, but mining is a chore in this area. Even if you have the ancient pickaxe and uh, a lot of stuff to increase your mining capability, it's going to be a pain because this area is huge. So one way to get around a lot of uh, mining areas is using these large bombs. Now 467 to 569 explosive damage, that's for damaging enemies, which it does help with, but 945 mining damage. So these are going to do a lot of damage, area effect damage on a lot of the walls. So if you want to be trying to get through a lot of the wilderness wall in a short amount of time, use if you don't have the ancient pickaxe yet, use a bunch of these bombs, really cheap to make, bomb pepper and poison slime, and go around and just start destroying that whole area. They don't work on the mold walls, unfortunately. So as of right now, I don't think really anything works on the mold walls, not even the ancient pickaxe. I don't know. But this is at 945 mining damage and it wouldn't break the mold walls. So super useful for expanding your area in the Ezios's wilderness. But uh, that's all we got. So there's 10 more tips right there for you guys. If you know about them, great. If you don't, then go ahead and make sure you like the video and the, leave, leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think if you have any other tips. And also, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and join the community. We'd love to have you here. Link in the description to join the Discord. Tell me all the tips that you guys have. Any other questions, concerns, comments that you have about the uh, the game, and we'll get them addressed. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. So take, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And as always, stay original, my friends. Later.